Hello, and you join us at William Haynes Jaguar Restorer. I'm not sure if that's in it, but they are... .net.com. .net .net. <laughs> they are, as we have learned in the five, ten minutes that we've been here, kings at restoring Jaguar E-types. There is nothing that Mr. William Haynes does not know, in which we'll show you in a second. But we are here today just to give you a feel for the place, what they do for E-types, and just how important the E-type was and still is and still is for the United Kingdom uh, yes, uh, yes. Like, we... ben, like Ben said there's nothing that William doesn't know about E-types literally down to like the rivets and the washers and oh, it just, it's things. amazing so it's probably gonna be quite a long one but Will knows a lot and his passion just and his knowledge just comes across on camera so yeah. stick around let's go ow hit me well <laughs> <laughs> You join us on the uh, ground floor in the actual workshop at William Haynes, and this is William. Yo, there we go. <laughs> and he's going to give us a little walk and talk. So follow us, please. I will. Um, so yes, let's start. Uh, lots of axles, three axles on racking. So that's your end rear suspension. Uh, this is uh, one of the very, very last 3.8 fixed heads before it transitioned to 4.2. Totally factory, never been restored from bulkhead forwards, so it's completely enough and shot. Mm -hmm. So we've done all new frames, bare metal it, painted back to the correct green, and we've just started the rear assembly front suspension, all in cab plating. The correct green? Yes. Right. People, that's green, which people think is opalescent dark green, okay. is incorrect. That is opalescent dark green. Oh, okay, right, let's get that. So, well, hopefully the camera does that, but that's slightly darker to my eye. Yes, it's a lot darker. So everything we do is absolutely factory. Yeah. Um, Alpha, it's not a Jaguar, that's what you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. The long and the short of it. This is uh, one of the very, very first work experimental OBLs below chassis 40. Um, so it came into us after we bought it bought recently and we're doing a complete concourse rebuild throughout. Wow. So this is the start of um, a long process to get this car to one of the best concourse cars we can possibly do yeah. with what we're dealing with. So mega, mega important And how, how long would a process, so say the car comes into the workshop in whatever state it's in, yeah. how long is the process of stripping it down and then rebuilding it to that it, sort of It level? depends on... Obviously it, where the car's well, at. It yeah, comes well, as, yeah. yeah, it depends so much what, what we've got, but in essence this would take probably about just shy of a year to get sorted. Yeah. Uh, when if they come in boxes it's three and a half thousand hours. And I take it concourse is defined by there is nothing wrong with it. It, it, it it's um, perfect. Concourse is I struggle with the word concourse. Yeah. So you have your concourse people cars say I build a car to a con concourse rebuild, which basically is like that. So it's a car which is everything's been touched. Yeah, yeah. A, con a William Hayne concourse car, we're counting the GKN and the BSA bolts in it, we're using the right washers, the right depth of nylon, wow. the right yeah. uh, black braiding on all the electrics. So people can build a concourse car and that's why I call it industrial standard. Yep. What I believe we do differently, we go further and that's down to the availability of what we've got in house yeah, yeah. Like, and the family archives we've got and the knowledge yeah, yeah. we've gained over the years, yeah, yeah. taking these cars apart. Mm -hmm. We do, we do everything you can't see. I'll tell you about this one. This is chassis 35. Wow. Right Rice and Grove Roadster. Uh, that has been bought recently by a new friend of the business and we, it's a typical 90s, early 2000s resto. So the problem with E-types is that it's full monocoque. So mm -hmm. people, they rock quite easily. So yeah. People, when you put new sills on, you boot floors on. But in the last couple of years, uh, myself, by doing this and other key people in the industry, we've managed to create the correct sills, the correct boot floors, all the panel work we can now make to below chassis 50 OBL spec, left and drive, right and drive. So this car, we're totally taking it apart. Yeah. Bare metalling it, putting new sills on, new boot floor in. From where it's at now? Yeah, so we're totally, so in the next six months, it'll be totally stripped out. Which is totally crazy. Which is amazing, because I bet you're about to say exactly what I'm about to say. Look at it. It looks. Like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a lovely car. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna be, we could, I'll be smoking around it this weekend uh, on road test, but. Is this the original colour? Yep. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. But originally it was red with red, which is quite a 60s colour. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow. But no, in, in short, they, some cars now are so historically important for Jaguar, they need to be 100%. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where before, people couldn't get them 100 cent, but no fault of their own, just the availability of what you could get on the shelf. Yeah, yeah. So now we've, the OBL, outside of the lot markets moved so much, we can now, we've managed to create the correct parts, so from that point of view, we can reinstate originality. Yeah. By reinstating originality to the way we do it, yeah. 
uh, which is different to how other people do it. Um, we get the cars pretty much within the fortnight of the month they left the factory on detail. This is a um, 965 4.2 left hand drive, converted to right hand drive. Um, a good, lovely friend of the company, he bought it off eBay. Bought it off eBay? Yeah. And, buy um, E-types off eBay? <laughs> yeah, do it all the time. Yes, yeah, so that's on Facebook Marketplace, it's a good place to yeah, buy yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> Suggested content. Exactly. Uh, yes, but basically, long and short of it is, um, long and short of it is, the brief is he's going to the more classic and through its time, and we're doing, we've done a massive mechanical overhaul on this. We've done a complete axle rebuild, go, going up a gear, going yep. up a diff ratio to 307. Um, we haven't done much with the engine because it's actually all right, but we've done a complete suspension rebuild, repaint the front frames, all new brake lines. So we've gone through, I call this an excessive major service, yeah. where it's basically recommissioning everything to keep it going on the road for a bit longer. Yeah. Um, and everything we're doing is a concourse spec. Um, so if you go over here, we're putting um, Fosway performance um, vented discs and nice. brake calipers on. Because this car is a, a real user, we've gone away from what we normally do, but for the right reasons. So, new house vented discs, twin pot calipers, we put Seal for Life XJ6 leather ball joint in so that it is, it's a better setup. Uh, so, we're doing a few things on there, which is um, basically general fast road spec improvements. Yeah, yeah. This here is the very last flat floor roadster ever made in the past book. That's ridiculous. So 875859. It was found in northern Canada and. Um, uh, one of our customers purchased it uh, a few years ago, and we're doing an absolute nut and bolt on it. So we're going to really remove the bulkhead. I was going to say it's panel. probably going to need a bit more than paint in this. <laughs> but that's. <laughs> but this, this, but this is what you want because it's never been touched. We're the first people ever take the engine out. First people ever take that's any so parts cool. off it. So we learned so much data off from it, stripping it down to what shape-proof washers they're using, down to what panhead um, self-tappers they're using, yeah. and it, all, it escalates and escalates where they mig to where they braze. And there's only so many cars left where they're totally original. A yeah, lot of these yeah. cars have been got out like these ones. To have the opportunity to take a completely factory original 1961 flat floor apart yeah. is life opportunity. It, In terms of E-types. It will so. never happen again. And if it does happen, I'll be amazed because there's so few out there which haven't, which haven't yet been done. Do you know what colour it was originally? This is original, gun, open as a gun metal, original paint. Oh, that's the, pa oh, that's the, oh, that's the paint. paint? Yes, that's the original paint. Wow. And it's used for ice racing in Canada. That's amazing. So it's come on Pirelli and Toronto studded tyres. Yeah, yeah. It's incredible. So the reason it rotted out so much is because it was, it was ice racing. But the head gasket went, the radiator went, and it got parked up in 1968. Yeah. And we were the first people to roll, basically strip, do anything on the car since 1968. That's amazing. Um, and yeah. that car's called Tetanus, is the code name, because it, every time you get around it, it cuts you. Interesting. You've got ice. Um, <laughs> In here, this is basically our little engine, our dirty room. Uh, we've got a Morris, Morris engine. We're sort of putting new clutch on things that mm -hmm. that's what we want to do. Workshop RS, things. Which um, engine is that from? That is from chassis one one three, uh, right and drive flat floor roasters. So see, there you go. That's the knowledge. Hang on, hang on. See, no, yes, because we must. What we, yeah, what we've got to say is what you said upstairs. You yep. can literally. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> but you can literally tell the month, year. Yeah, totally. Just by looking at the, it, it's um, we're in a fantastic position where um, I've grown up with it and I've done a lot of work, um, physically on the tools, learning the job. And the only way you know your job is yeah. by physically doing it. Yeah. I agree. So I know, for the best of my ability, every part from 1961 all the way up through to V12 E-Type. I can tell you where it came from and what year it came off. That's so yeah. cool. Um, and and also that experience, you can't, that's not a book you can read. That's I, just years and I, years and years and years and well, years. Why are you ever so lucky that people entrusted me to do the, to work on their cars? Yeah, like, yeah. And I've learned from doing the job and making mistakes and learning yeah. and asking the right people who were there at the time, why was this different? Yeah. And so that's because X, Y, and Z. You think, ah, oh, so that's why there's a different parts number parts in the parts book. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. We, my job is to, there's a holy grail of the parts which tells you everything. It's the areas which aren't in writing is yeah. what we need to know. Yeah, but, yeah. And we, the, knowing what the changes were and what the difference in castings on certain parts of mechanical are, etc, etc, etc. Yeah. 
that is why we're good at doing early cars because yeah. we've got the base knowledge of what all is of available in writing yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and that's what this is all about. Also I had a question because I was on that balcony and I saw that. Is that a Royal Mail bike? It is, it's Amy's, it's her, it's her lounge bike. Her that lounge is, bike. Um, um, as in like she had it in it, the lounge? Yeah, never had it in the house. Yeah. So cool. And it works, so it's just I had a full engine rebuild by a friend of ours. So um, cool. Yeah, it's two straight it goes, we can you, you smoke around with it, it's cool. So cool. If you want to use an E-Type, properly use one, the Series 2 is better. It's a better car than the Series 1. So here's your question. No, no, so I could, yeah, so because we were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. And please don't get angry yeah. at me. But <laughs> don't tiss him around the back of the head with a spanner. <laughs> series 3 is my favourite, no, I'm giving <laughs> it. We, we were outside Auto Waxworks and there was a, there was a, there was a, a dark green E-Type outside. And obviously we, we know, and you probably get this question a lot, we know how to recognise a Series 3. Yeah. But are there any obvious I mean they're probably the rear are, I think the real what, tail what, like what are the series obvious two? pointers between a series one and series two? How can no, you how can you instantly uh, there you go. instant one? <laughs> yeah is that series two had open headlights. Ah, this, I did is, it. Right. this is a series two bonnet. Yeah. And the bump is really bad because you can't see that but the bump is completely different. The yeah. nose itself is wider, so a bigger mouth yeah. to accommodate the different radiators we had. They raise the headlights up, hence why they couldn't run the cowling over. Mm -hmm. This is open headlights, different bumpers, different motive bar, bigger mouth. Apart from that panel wise, it's very similar. Yeah. The only difference is panel wise at the back end where you'd have the lights here on series one. Yeah. The series two has it hits a rounded bumper, same as a V twelve E type, similar thing. And then they they put the um, the, the main lights there because it was all about US regulations of, of, of light height, brake light uh, height. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And other things. So um, My question to you. Yes. One E type to take home. What in the shed? It's Not in this shed, in general, your perfect oh, E-Type. Oh. That's a very good question. Your series, your spec, number? is it, not the chassis number, what is it is in terms of, is it fixed head, is it spider, is it, what engine, is it a three point, whatever? I would have, I know what car it is. <laughs> oh, uh, nice, we love it. The, one of the worst cars, the chassis 25. Yeah. And that was the very first ever semi-lightweight. Oh. And it was used for experimental and all the strong mode testing, it did all the, test development work for 4.2 for this car for the series 2 4.2 yeah did all the test mileage yeah it's the first car with certain panels on it that car is still monocoque aluminium bonnet aluminium doors and an aluminium factory hardtop the same as the lightweight yeah i'd run a 3.4 d type wide angle head in it with a zf five speed gearbox in it yeah. and, and, a, and have a long bit of it so it, it would deep deep bumper it uh on factory offsets um with mud flaps on it. You should go into restoring Jaguars. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so that, that's, what that, that's what I would have. Um, if I was going to get in the car tomorrow and say, uh, Will and Amy, we call each other Waymy. So if, if, we, if Waymy wanted to go on holiday, yeah, yeah. Amazing, I would probably get into a 1964 right and drive fixed head coupe 4.2 series one. There you go, that's, where, uh, because, that's probably where I'd sit as well. Uh, you've got armrests, you've got full synchro, you've got torque here engine for motorway driving. Yeah. The, the main thing all these things, if you go, to, there's lots of restoration shops. Yeah. And you're only as good as your team. You're yeah, only agreed. as good as your weakest member of staff. Yeah. So the key point is, um, <laughs> excuse me. The, the key point is we've got some, we're training um, younger generation than us lot. Mm -hmm. uh, so the same generation you guys. So somebody who's been in the business for 40 years. But there's so much to know. It's, it's, taken, me, it's taken me years to understand yeah. everything on it. Um, and then you go into early detail. I yeah. I've got cool stuff upstairs, like one off your pumps. It's like amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, should, love we, it. should we uh, should we go and have a little nosy round? Alright, let's go have a nosy round upstairs. There you go. Click. It's we've swapped. Continue, <laughs> please. Show us your cool room. Um, this is upstairs. This is where we lunch, and this is where we go. <laughs> this is where we lie down. We've had enough. <laughs> um, exactly. No, it's it's, it's it's where Amy works. Obviously, Amy's um. She does our editing up here, and it's where we sort of have this the fun side of business, yeah, yeah. and then my, my side of business where I lock my door in my office and get on with it. Yeah, uh, yeah, but this, yeah. is, this is the fun bit. So it's a brand new fixed head OBL and flat floor doors, uh, double skinned up there. So they're brand new. So um, we've had them. that's just a door, and it's literally just that thin. It just like it, it's, embodies it's the whole sort of slim physique of an E type, doesn't mm -hmm. it? This is, this is a very, very, very early car. I won't tell you what chassis number it's got at all. So I'm going to cover the labels. Yes, it's 85 something. This is a submergible fuel pump. 
So all 3.8 E-types had the fuel pump inside the fuel tank submerging petrol. Right. Which sounds madness. Yeah, yeah. Because you've got electrics inside petrol. Um, they were brilliant, but they are very hard to... Um, Come they, by. And also they rot. And then they went to an SU pump, which is outside the fuel tank, for 4.2s, and then transitioned all the way through. Yeah. The, <laughs> this is getting very geeky. <laughs> the very first cars had this fuel pump, and they went to a later spec fuel pump, where there's different. the whole body's different. Mm -hmm. This is by far, probably, in my head, the best one in Europe. Really? So they are so... I never saw one until I was given this as a bit of a, you know, the customer found it and we, it's, I've used, been using it as a paperweight, March 1961. It is, that is, will never happen again. This is why matching numbers is so important because yeah. the cars are now, most cars are on the second or third skim. Mm -hmm. There's only such, so much, there's only so much meat you can take you off. You can take off. Yeah, yeah. Every so time you do it, it gets... It gets, there will be a time in the very near future where a lot of E-types and x case so every oh, one twenty is are unable to be machined again. So yeah. that's why matching numbers are so important because you know the car hasn't, is more original and had less work done yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Where a lot of the cars floating around have got different cylinder what? heads on because you physically run out of meat. All the cars I'm involved with, I find full matching numbers cars. So that's cylinder head, engine block, gearbox, the diff. Lot. Lucas um, relays the lot is full matching numbers. Um, so one of my cars is everything's right. Yeah. Um, but there is going to be a time it's going to become more and that's more impossible to do. Apart from that, that's a whistle stop tour. I, I could be here for hours. Oh no, honestly, like that's that's great, and I could sit here and talk to you for hours. But how much battery have we got? Um, we've one got minute one minute and forty-five seconds of recording time. Perfect. So in that Sounds one more minute forty-five seconds or less. Thank you very much no, for the talk. Thank you guys. Um, and we would love to come back and just, there's well, a number of things. I want to see where that, the car, the rusty car goes. Yeah. I want to see where loads of it goes. There, there's also so much here, which is so much going on, which isn't in this room. So you yeah. should come and see all the clever stuff, like the fabrication, the paint, and the yeah, machining, yeah. and that, all those processes. We are full of artisans in our industry. Yeah, and yeah. We, we, all these artisans, these clever you know, people, are able for us to pull everything together. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that interesting. It's amazing. Thank you very much. No I'll shake your hand on so behalf of him as well. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Cheers.